Given the function defined by f of x equals 3x to the fifth minus 20x cubed, let's find all values of x for which the graph of f is concave up. Now when is f concave up? f is concave up when the second derivative, f double prime, is positive. So we need to find where f double prime is positive. That means that we need to find the second derivative first. So here we go f prime of x is equal to 15 x to the fourth minus 60 x squared. Now f double prime of x, 15 times 4 is 60 x cubed minus 120 x. Now we're going to set this equal to zero. There's no places where the second derivative is undefined. Right now we're looking for our possible points of inflection. We don't necessarily know that they are going to be points of inflection just by setting the second derivative to zero or seeing where it's undefined. Because the definition of a point of inflection is that the concavity has to change. So we do have to do a second derivative line analysis to determine whether our concavity is changing but first we gotta find where the second derivative is equal to zero or undefined. We can factor out a 60x leaving us with x squared minus 2 and this is equal to zero. We can factor this further this is 60x times x minus root 2 times x plus root 2 and that means that we have possible possible points of inflection at x equals negative root 2, x equals 0, and x equals positive root 2. To determine whether these are points of inflection, of course, we need to do our line analysis. So here we'll make this the graph of f double prime. We can plot negative root 2, 0, and root 2. Now here is our second derivative right here. Let's plug in a number to the left of negative root 2, like for example negative 10. Well this will be negative out here, negative in here, and negative over here. So negative times a negative times a negative is still going to be negative. Let's check between negative root 2 and 0. How about, for example, negative 0.1? Negative out here, negative in here, positive over here. So a negative times a negative times a positive is positive. Let's check positive 0.1. Positive, negative, positive, this is negative. And of course to the right of root 2, how about 10? Positive, 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 this is positive out here. So all of these points, negative root 2, 0, and positive root 2, are in fact points of inflection. However, we are being asked to find for which values of x, f is concave up. Well, f is concave up when our second derivative is positive. So that happens in between negative root 2 and 0 as well as to the right of root 2. So f is concave up on the interval from negative root 2 to 0 union from root 2 to positive infinity. And of course f, f is not concave up at negative root 2 because f double prime is zero at that point, not positive. And so here is the answer, f is concave up from negative root two to zero and from root two to infinity. Let's now determine for which x values the graph of y, which is negative five over x minus two, is concave down. Concave down means that y double prime is negative. So we need to determine when y double prime is negative. To do that we first have to find 
y double prime. Now we have a fraction here which is a bit tricky. So we can rewrite this fraction as negative 5 times x minus 2 to the negative 1. I would rather use chain rule than have to use some form of quotient rule in this fraction right here. This means that y prime, we bring down the negative 1, so negative 5 times stuff to the negative 1. The derivative of that is positive 5 times stuff to the negative 2 times the derivative of the stuff, but the derivative of x minus 2 is just 1, so that's fine. Now let's find y double prime. Again, we have 5 stuff to the negative 2. The derivative of 5 stuff to the negative 2 is negative 10 stuff to the negative 3 times the derivative of the stuff, but the derivative of x minus 2, of course, is still 1. So this means that y double prime is equal to negative 10 over x minus 2 cubed. Now we need to find the possible inflection points of y. The way to do this, of course, is to find where y double prime is equal to 0 or undefined. Well, if you set this equal to 0, that means that negative 10 is equal to 0. That doesn't happen. There are no values for which this function is equal to 0. However, there is one x value for which y double prime is undefined. That is that x equals 2. So we have a possible, a possible inflection point at x equals 2. To determine whether it actually is an inflection point, we need to determine whether our second derivative changes sign at x equals 2. To do that, let's create our line analysis. So this is the graph of y double prime. Here is 2. Now let's plug something to the left of 2 into our function. How about 0? Let's see here. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Cubed is negative 8. A negative divided by a negative is positive. Let's check to the right of 2. Let's say how about 5. 5 minus 2 is 3 cubed is going to be positive. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. And so indeed, x equals 2 is an inflection point because y double prime changes from positive to negative. Moreover, we also know where the graph of y is concave down. We know that the graph of y is concave down when y double prime is negative. And so we can write that y is concave down on the interval from 2, not including 2 because that's where y double prime does not exist, to infinity. And that is the answer. Now let's determine where the graph of y equals 3x to the fourth minus 16x cubed plus 24x squared plus 48 is concave down. So we know that y is concave down when y double prime is negative. So first, we've got to find y double prime. Well, y prime is equal to 12x cubed minus 48x squared plus 48x, which means that y double prime is equal to 36x squared minus 96x plus 48. Now, we need to find the possible inflection points, so we'll set our second derivative equal to 0 or see where it's undefined. Well, here we have a polynomial, and a polynomial is defined everywhere. So let's just set this equal to 0. First, we can factor out a 12. So we have 12 times 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 and this is all equal to 0. We can factor this. Here we have 12. Let's see, to make 3x squared, we've got 3x and x. To make positive 4, we could have negative 2 and negative 2, and that does add to negative 8, so there we go. So we have our possible inflection points at 
x equals 2 over 3 and at x equals 2. To determine whether these are inflection points, we need to use our second derivative line analysis. So here's the graph of y double prime. We'll graph x equals 2 over 3 and x equals 2. Let's look to the left of 2 over 3. Let's say 0. If we check 0, we can plug 0 into our second derivative. Positive, negative, negative. That's going to be positive. How about in between 2 thirds and 2? Let's say 1. Positive, positive, negative. This will be negative in here. And to the right of 2, let's try 3. Positive, positive, positive. There we go. So that means that we did in fact have inflection points at x equals 2 over 3 and at x equals 2 because at 2 over 3, y is changing from concave up to concave down. And at x equals 2, y is changing from concave down to concave up. Now the question was, where is y concave down? Well, y is concave down when the second derivative is negative. And this occurs on the interval from 2 over 3 non-inclusive to 2 non-inclusive. And that's the answer. Let's take a look at the graph of y. This is what y looks like. If you go to the left of 0, this function just approaches infinity. And of course, the right of 3, this thing just goes to infinity again over here. But we've zoomed in using wolframalpha.com to see what this function might look like. Now, if you look over here, this function is going to be going up to infinity to the left of 0, like that. So it's going to remain concave up that way. And of course, the same goes for over here. So what we can determine is that we can see where our graph is concave up, where it's concave down, and then where it's concave up again. So it looks like our graph is concave up, up until around right here-ish, where it changes concavity. Here, it's concave down because it looks like a hill. Of course, that doesn't last up until right here around, and then it becomes concave up again. So the only real concave down area of this graph is right here, because f double prime apparently is negative. Here, f double prime should be positive because we have concave up. And here, f double prime should be positive again, because this is obviously very concave up. And of course, right here, we have points of inflection because our graph is changing concavity. Now, if you take a look at what our analysis was for this particular graph, let's move it on over here, you'll notice that around two-thirds we have a point of inflection. This is, in fact, around two-thirds, about 0 0.666. And then to the left of two-thirds, we have a positive second derivative. That means that to the left of two-thirds, y double prime is positive, which it is, and it's concave up. Between two-thirds and two, f double prime is negative, as we noted, which means that our second derivative uh, is negative, and our, deriv and our uh, y is concave down, which it is. This is a hill right here. And of course, at 2, another point of inflection. And to the right of 2, our second derivative is positive, so it's concave up. So this second derivative analysis that we do, this line, very closely actually, in fact perfectly, models the actual function itself as we can note here.